boobs and blues. We have already touched on the importance of keeping baby warm and sweet. In the picture you can see little Charlie swaddled in a blanket. He's got a hat on. A lot of our heat is lost through our heads. Think about maybe when you've been really cold, such as at the snow. You put on a beanie. Look at the head to body ratio on baby Charlie. It's even more relevant for babies to have hats. With their huge heads, their capacity to lose heat through their head is enormous. There are considerations for maintaining heat when bathing too. Water has to be warm enough to keep them warm, but not so much that they will be burnt. Keeping babies nice and sweet. The acceptable BSL for a fresh baby, so 24 hours old or less, is greater than two. Anything lower must be acted on as hypoglycemia. Hypo meaning low, glyc meaning glucose, emia meaning blood, low glucose in blood. So hypoglycemia in the newborn can lead to long-term health and developmental issues. You also need to think about the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. Drowsiness is one of the, is a, one of the signs and symptoms of it. And in a baby, this could just be viewed as a good baby behavior. After 24 hours, normal blood sugar is 2.5. Feeding regimes are extremely important for the infant. Ensuring regular feeds are offered to, to ensure that metabolic demands are met and therefore maintaining their blood sugar level. This is especially important for babies to mums who are diabetic pregnancy-induced or pre-existing. The World Health Organization recognizes that breastfeeding is an, is an unequaled way of providing ideal food for the healthy growth and development of infants. We are lucky here in Australia that bottle feeding is even an option. Many women throughout the world, this is not true. With our beautiful clean water and plenty of formula, Common infant illnesses. Babies have immature immune systems. Whilst they do get some immunity across the placenta while they're still in the oven, and more, again, if they're breastfed babies, they are still have an underdeveloped immune system. For this reason, infants have increased risk of catching viruses, which often lead to higher severity of illness and requirement of hospitalization. If they have a common cold, therefore they get rhinoritis, fancy way of saying runny nose, they can't breathe properly. As their nose breathes, therefore they can't feed properly. Now your baby is dehydrated as well as running the common cold. Jaundice is a common newborn complaint. It is the yellow coloration of the skin and the whites of the eyes. It occurs in 50% of all normal born babies. Caused by hyperbilirremia, Common infant illnesses. Babies have immature immune systems. Whilst they do get some immunity across the placenta while they're still in the oven, and more again if they're breastfed bubs, they still have an underdeveloped immune system. For this reason, infants have an increased risk of catching viruses, which often lead to higher severity of illness and the requirement of hospitalization. If they have a common cold, for example, this would lead to rhinoritis, fancy way of saying runny nose. Babies are nose breathers. So now their nose is full, they can't breathe. They're not breathing properly, they're not gonna feed properly. Now you have a dehydrated baby with a big snotty nose. 
Jaundice is a common newborn complaint. It is a yellow discoloration of the skin and whites of the eyes. It occurs in almost 50% of all normal newborn babies. It's caused by hyperbilirubinemia. Jaundice is a common newborn complaint. It is a yellow coloration of the skin and whites of the eyes. It occurs in almost 50% of all normal newborn babies. It's caused by hyperbilirubinemia. Let's break that word down. So hyper meaning high or too much. Bilirubin, which is a byproduct of the red blood cell breakdown and emia meaning in the blood. So too much bilirubin in the blood. This is largely due to the baby's immature liver not being able to process old red blood cells as efficiently as effectively as later on. Rashes are another thing that is common in infancy. Cradle cap, which you can see in this image here, is commonly seen on the scalp of the newborn as scaly lesions with a greasy feel and is thought to be a reactive response to irritants. This bubba over here, you may think that this baby has been abused. This bruise-like rash or skin discoloration is common, particularly amongst babies of Eastern and Central Asian descent. It is called a Mongolia blue spot and typically is found on the buttocks, back, and even up to the shoulders. It's caused by a cluster of melanocytes within the dermis and this will fade over time. The bottom left hand image is of newborn acne. This happens in approximately 20% of neonates and it's like the pimples that we get when we're teenagers and adults. Milia which you can see on Bubba's nose there. This is also called, these are also called milk spots and are small follicular cysts that form primarily on the baby's nose. These are very common. Moving on to mum now. Perinatal depression. Antenatal depression is experiencing depression during your pregnancy, whilst post, meaning after. So postnatal depression means depression after pregnancy. It occurs between one month and up to one year after the birth of a baby or babies. Postnatal depression affects up to one in seven women giving birth in Australia. Then there's the baby blues which is characterized by being teary, feeling irritable, overly sensitive in interactions with others, feeling moody, all a very normal postnatal experiences for women in the baby blues. Perinatal depression, looking at risk factors. If there's a history or current diagnosis of mental health problems, there's substance abuse problems, lack of support, current or history of abuse or negative stressful life events. Signs and symptoms, what we're looking for. So low mood or feeling numb, feelings of inadequacy, failure, guilt or shame, worthless, hopeless, helpless, empty or sad, often feeling close to tears, feeling angry, irritable or resentful, fear for the baby or fear of being alone with the baby, fear of being alone or going out, loss of interest in things that you would normally enjoy, altered sleep patterns, appetite changes, Malaise, which is just a basically a fancy word for saying that you feel like shit. Feeling cloudy, lack of concentration and poor memory. Having thoughts of self-harm or suicide or wanting to escape and get away from everything. 
treatment, psychological or talk therapy. There's certain antidepressant medications, alternative medicine, hospital admission. There's mother and baby units, and in extreme cases, they have start. They're using ECT. These are some really cool um, documentaries that classify as study, but they're not examinable. So Babies is a doco um, that looks at the life of four babies around the world. One's from Mongolia, one's from Africa, one's from San Fran, one's from Tokyo. And it's from birth all the way through for the first year of their life. And it's, it's really cool seeing the cultural differences. This is another, this is a documentary, um, anyone who's thinking about MIDI, have a look at this. So um, on the slides that I'll upload, that link to the YouTube clip should be live. Um, so that's Ricky Lake in, in the bathtub having a bath. So this is an American doco. Um, it's all about the business of being born and the money that's being um, made and not made and how um, women's choice isn't something that's... Uh, very commonly listened to these days with the medicalization of, of labor and birth. These are some references and resources that I've used uh, when putting this presentation together. If anything in this lecture has caused any personal distress or if you feel like you want to get any support around your mental health, then pr please connect to services that are available around you. So there's a uni counseling service that's free Beyond Blue is a fantastic organisation, as is Lifeline, and that's Lifeline's phone number. Thank you, everyone. I hope I've increased your knowledge on some infancy cares and also caring for mum.